stay home, stay, stay, stay safe. Okay, we are meeting after a very long time, and I am going to today revise topic on blood regulation due to the, due to request by some of the students. Now, before going to start this topic, I would like to summarize some of the things what we have learned. So far, we have seen that is, say, if you remember. The definition of that is the blood pressure. You can see on the slide that we have defined that blood pressure is nothing but that is the lateral pressure exerted by flowing blood on the walls of the blood vessel, usually expressed in the millimeters of mercury. Now, blood when we are saying vessels may all types of blood vessel that is starting from that is larger arteries to the say that is the capillaries and venules and so on. Clinically, we know that the blood pressure is determined in an artery. That superficial artery, that is the arterial, say, that is the blood pressure. Then, say, similar, uh, sorry for a delay. Now, what I was talking here, that I was just talking here about, that is the blood pressure. And the blood pressure is exerted by column in other types of the blood vessel, which I have just mentioned. For example, capillary blood pressure and the venous blood pressure. If you remember that, we have also seen, that is the four types of blood pressure with their normal ranges, that is, systolic blood pressure, namely, that is diastolic blood pressure, pulse pressure and the mean arterial pressure. Then similarly we have also seen that is how does uh, the blood pressure vary that is in the different say that is the say that is levels of the our vascular system that is starting from left ventricle where it is maximum and that is the minimum in the capacitance vessel that is especially large vents. Then we are also studied here that the factors affecting blood pressure, some of the physical factors. Then also it was say, followed by that is physiological factors. I think we have discussed say, the, fact, the factors just like say age, then sex and so on. And the lastly that is the say how does say the respiratory uh, rate also affects the blood pressure. Then we also studied here that is the pathological variations in blood pressure and under that we have seen types of say that is the hypertension. Now broadly speaking here this hypertension is divided in two types that is the primary hypertension and the secondary hypertension. Now generally we know that that is it is also the primary hypertension is also called as essential hypertension. It is characterized by a raised blood pressure without any underlying disease. Now there are risk factors for primary hypertension include say hereditary, obesity, mental tension and smoking. Say then we have come across the secondary hypertension which refers to condition in which blood pressure is raised due to some underlying disease. For common causes we know cardiovascular disease for example atherosclerosis and so on. Then I will not go in that much details. Then similarly say that is coming to the hypotension. Hypotension is also divided just like hypertension in two categories. That what you call it as a primary hypertension and the secondary hypertension. Remember here, in primary hypertension also it is called as essential hypertension. It is a disorder of unknown etiology. The secondary hypertension occurs due to some of the say other underlying diseases such as pressures are associated with decrease in the cardiac output but sometimes with decreasing that is total peripheral register. So what are the causes say some of them I will just mention that is hemorrhage and so on. Then say how do we measure say that is a blood pressure that also we have studied and what are the normal ranges according to say that is joint national committee seventh report and American college of cardiology and that is the American heart association. And in parallel with that we also follow up to, up to certain level, these ranges or variations of or normal values of blood pressure. Then coming to the, what is the important part? Today's important part is that, that what we are going to study is mechanism of blood pressure regulation. Now remember here, in the, uh, this, while studying say regulation, uh, that is regulation of say that is blood pressure, remember that, if you remember that I have told you, there are say various say that is the ways to explain how this blood pressure is regulated. But say I have told you we will consider or this categorize so specifically this all say blood pressure mechanism under three categories. Now if you remember that I have mentioned here that is say these all blood pressure mechanisms are 
say divided into three categories the one of them was first was say rapidly or short acting mechanism it is followed by intermediate acting mechanism and third is the long term acting mechanism now just look at this uh, slide you will find that under the rapid short, short act or short acting mechanism there are say various mechanisms are say that is the involved or included for example the baroreceptors chemoreceptors then cns ischemic response there are also some of the other rapidly active mechanism that we call it as a low pressure say that is receptors benbridge reflex and volume receptors the second category is that the intermediate acting mechanism or what we call it the capillary fluid shift mechanism and the second category which is included in this intermediate acting mechanism is the stress relaxation of blood vessels third is say the long term acting mechanism under that we have included two set types renin angiotensin system and renal body fluid system we will see one by one now before that it is necessary to understand how which are the blood pressure regulatory center now normally we call it as that is say the vasomotor center or vmc is a portion of the say medulla oblongata it is discrete group of the nuclei which is say present in that is what we call it as a brain stem mainly medulla oblongata that together with the cardiovascular system and the respiratory center, center regulates blood pressure and other homeostatic processes. It consists of say that is some of the important center which are included in the vasomotor center. For example, that we call as a vasoconstrictor area that is C1, vasodilator area A1, then cardio inhibitory area also called as that is the medullary parasympathetic center or cardiac vagal center is also called as nucleus ambiguous which receives apron from NTS mean nucleus tractus solitaris which sends inhibitory signal to the vagus nerve, vagus nerve to decrease heart rate and cardiac force of contact. Now let us see where they are situated. You can see it is the brain stem. Now it consists of, as I already told you, vasomotor center. You can see in this figure, consists of say vasoconstrictor uh, say area, the cardio inhibitory area, and vasodilator area. Just to summarize here, that is a vasoconstrictor area called as C1, located say in the figure bilaterally in the anterolateral portion of the upper medulla, consists of say epinephrine secreting neurons. Then at the middle or medial portion, you can see here cardio inhibitory area located at the medial portion of vasomotor center. Then vasodilator area, that area is also called as A1, located bilaterally in the anterolateral portion of the lower half, half of the medulla. Now the sensory area 1, which is not shown in this figure, it is located bilaterally in the posterior lateral portions of medulla and that is the lower pulse. Now, just to summarize here, vasomotor center consists of, as I already mentioned here, that is the vasoconstrictor area called as C1, located bilaterally in the anterior portions of the upper medulla and consists of the epinephrine secreting nerve. The vasodilator area, that is area called as A1, located bilaterally in the anterior portions of lower half of the medulla. Fiber from this area project to the say vasoconstrictor area to inhibit activity of vasoconstrictor area to cause vasodilation. Sensory area A2 located bilaterally in the tractus solitaris in the posterior lateral portions of the medulla and lower pons. Receives say that is signals from the vagus and the glossopharyngeal nerve to control the activity of vasoconstrictor and vasodilator area. There is also cardio inhibitory area located medial portion of the say that is vasomotor center which I have just shown. Now just give a look at this figure where these barrel receptors are situated. Now just at this figure it shows in this figure what is it? It is a common carotid artery. It shows here say it is two divisions that is one is say number two external carotid artery and the third one we call it as that is say internal carotid artery. Other important thing is that here say 
you will find that you say that is the sepulch like structure we call it the carotid sacs now at this part say the baroreceptors are situated there are two types of the baroreceptors one which is situated on the arc of aorta and what you see here say these are apart from that there are present say some of the say that is the uh, special types of the receptor which are sensitive to the chemical change which is occurring or chemical composition occurring in the blood and that we call it as that is the chemo receptors now just give a look to this figure it shows the actual say location of this barrel receptor in this figure you can see the barrel receptors are situated at two position one as i shown you that is an arc of aorta and they are called as aortic barrel receptor and those say other barrel receptors which i told you which are situated at that is carotid sinus these are called as the carotid say sinus barrel receptor now how they are innervated that also we will see later on now you can see just to give you the idea here say that is uh, this uh, aortic barrel receptors are say innervated by 10 cranial nerve what we call as the vagus nerve and they are, and they terminate in the medulla similarly glossopharyngeal say that is no say is say innervate that is the carotid sinus say that is the baroted receptor to the one of the other now what is present that is we call as the herring now and this figure shows the same thing that is the aortic say that is the arc barrel receptor they are innervated by vagus now and as is well as i told you and say the carotid sinus barrel receptors they are say they are say innervated by ninth cycle that is cranial now what we call it as a glossopharyngeal now then say as i already told you that is this is the say location of that is the barrel cells the one important thing they are also classified there are say different types of the classification of barrel receptors are present now we will say that is consider in physiologically two types of say that is a classification of barrel receptors what we call it as a high pressure barrel receptors and low pressure barrel receptors. the high pressure barrel receptors where they are situated they are present at carotid sinus aortic arc then wall of left ventricle they are also present at root of right subclavian artery and junction of thyroid artery with common carotid artery second category say it's called as a low pressure receptors these say receptors say what we call it as they are called as atrial say receptors scattered in the wall of right and the left atrium barrel receptors located in the right atrium at the entrance of that we know that superior and the inferior vena cava and in the left atrium at the entrance of pulmonary veins the pulmonary receptors located in the wall of pulmonary trunk and its division into the right and the left say pulmonary art this is say that is regarding that is as i already told you that is the say that is two types of the receptor many of the times you will come across one terminology regarding the barrel receptor they are also also called as a pressure receptor means it means that which are which can be stimulated or say which which are sensitive to the pressure change now they are also present say anatomical classification if you remember that they are also say called as that is the atrial barrel receptors are located in the wall of the arteries distributed mainly in the adventitial layer then cardiac barrel receptors are located in the wall of the heart which are present sub endocardially as atrial receptors and ventricular receptors now atrial receptors are nothing but stress receptors which are scattered throughout the wall of atria and interatrial septum pulmonary so when no atrial receptor which are located in the left atrium and at the entrance of pulmonary veins the ventricular receptor which are scattered throughout the left ventricle and interventricular septum now where are they are situated that i have told you that is the about the location where they are situated at carotid sinus and that is the aortic arc barrel receptors and how they are innervated that is aortic say that the barrel receptors are innervated by that is say 10th vagus nerve and that is carotid sinus receptors they are say innervated by that is they are receptor innervated by that is the ninth cranial cranial nerve that is a glossopharyngeal nerve 
then say now let us say that is consider say that is the sum of the peculiarities of the barrow cells barrow mean what is the meaning of the barrow means this is the pressure mean these receptors are sensitive to say that is the pressure but however just the few first important characteristic the which i consider very important is that barrow receptors say continually continuously monitor arterial blood pressure and say atrial stress receptors which are present they monitor heart and diastolic say that is the blood volume as you can see in this slide second is that say barrow receptor nerve endings both free and the and they are encapsulated are embedded in the outer layer that is adventitial of the arterial blood wall which contains some elastic tissue more than half of the barrier cell axons are unmyelinated unmyelinated means of course there are three types of the nerve fibers they show maximum response by the number of impulses per mm of pressure change in the normal blood pressure fifth characteristic is that the receptor show greater response to change in the barrier receptor rather than a constant pressure what does it mean they are not such sensitive sensitive to the say that is the steady say that is the pressure for example suppose that we generally say that barrier receptors are sensitive in the range of say that is 50 uh, mean they respond to the change there is then uh, uh, what we say that uh, blood pressure variation about 50 to say approximately 200 mm of mercury suppose that even say that is the blood pressure remains constant in the 100 mm of mercury or 150 mm of mercury they will not show a response to this but however they are of a slight change in the blood pressure suppose that 155 or 105 they will respond so what does it mean the receptor show greater response to a change in the blood pressure rather than to a constant pressure receptor show slight greater response to the increasing pressure than decreasing pressure which i have just mentioned if a person has persist persistently increasing blood pressure for a longer time the function of barrier receptor is reset is reset mean they adapt to at this level at a higher level of increased blood pressure barrier receptors exist their action for a very short time sorry barrier receptors exert their action for a very short time and they do not take any part in the long term regulation of blood pressure this is very important sensitivity of barrier receptors can be changed by chronic diseases the long term change in blood pressure due to loss of barrier receptor reflex control is called as neurogenic hyper hypertension since barrier receptor say that is are not active in this situation barrier receptor system opposes either increase or decrease in the arterial pressure hence it is also called as pressure buffer system and the nerves from the barrier receptors are called buffer nerve mean this try to understand here the barrier receptor all the time help here to regulate normal blood pressure in the our normal defined ranges of blood pressure the responses of aortic barrier receptors are similar to carotid receptors means but however more research is go, say that is i mean that in part a on this, uh, that the response of the carotid receptors however the point is that the aortic barrier receptors are also stimulated but however they are stimulated at higher pressure levels than carotid receptor that is at levels about say 30 mm of say mercury higher than carotid what does it mean suppose that if the carotid say that is the barrier receptor is stimulated at for example say that is 100 mm of mercury on the contrary you will find that aortic say that is the barrier receptor will be stimulated at higher level about say 30 mm of mercury mean they will be stimulated at 30 mm of mercury now how do they function now how do they function the response of carotid and aortic barrier receptor to blood pressure now considering say all the characteristics of say that is the barrier receptor let us understand here how do they function at normal blood that is normal blood pressure level receptor discharge at low rate however increase and increase say in the discharge of sir when the pressure in the carotid sinus and the aortic arc rises and decline when the pressure falls minimum pressure about say 60 mm of mercury at carotid barrier receptors are stimulated is called threshold of barrier receptor reflex means i have told you normally 
they are stimulated in the range of say 50 to 200 mm of mercury. Some of the books they define it 50 to 160, but just say you will consider this value as 50 to say 200 mm of mercury as per the literature say that is survey. And say what does it mean? There say that is the threshold of stimulation as it is mentioned here minimum pressure at which they are stimulated is 60 mm of mercury at which carotid barrel receptors are stimulated and is called as threshold of barrel receptor movements. Above threshold level say barrel receptor respond progressively more rapidly till the discharge rate reaches a plateau. Mean what does it mean? That is suppose that as the pressure goes on increasing that is say from 50 to say that is 160 mm of mercury what you will find is that say barrel receptor respond progressively more rapidly or discharge is higher but however it will not go say continuously increasing it will reach to the plateau level and where you will not find any further increase hence it is said that say that is say barrel receptor respond progressively more rapidly till the discharge rate reaches a plateau mean what does it mean no further increase in the response for example at 150 to 160 mm of mercury you will understand further from this figure in say that is normal operative range of say 95 to 100 mm of mercury slight change in the pressure causes a strong change in the barrel sector reflex signals to readjust the arterial blood pressure to normal what does it mean it means that say that is the normal operating range of 95 to 100 mm of mercury slight change in the pressure causes strong change in the barrel receptor reflex signal to readjust the arterial blood pressure to not when barrel when blood pressure say decreases below normal levels barrel receptors discharge say that is the rate decreases and reflexly bring the pressure to normal level and vice versa means that is whenever there is increase in the blood pressure barrel receptor will try to bring the blood pressure to normalcy and whenever there is a decrease in the blood pressure they will just help here to bring the blood pressure to the say it's a normal level now you can see here say this to summarize here normally barrel receptor discharge at say that is a low rate discharge rate is say that increases high blood pressure and decreases at the say low blood pressure below 60 mm of mercury there will not be any discharge and above say the 160 mm of mercury no further rise in discharge and the point is that here they do not respond there is to the say there is the stagnancy or steady state and we call it as that is a plateau response of the barrel zone. that is barrel receptors are sensitive in the range of 60 to 160 mm of mercury they are maximally sensitive to the at mean arterial pressure of 95 mm of mercury and they respond more to the rapidly changing blood pressure than to a stationary high or low levels of that is the blood pressure. Now you can see that is say how do they function here as from this figure if it is clear say as you can see say this is the say there is the arterial blood pressure which is shown on y axis and uh, sorry that is on x axis and this is the say that is number of impulses which are say that is the mean discharge by barrel system. Now as you can see here in this figure when the pressure reaches to the 0 to 60 say there is a gradual increase in these impulses and as the pressure increases say somewhere at the 160 the discharge rate is maximum however after that beyond that say that is the blood pressure increase more than 100 and say that is the 60 you will find that they reach to the plateau level there will not occur any change and hence that is what is the their action that is as this as shown here the carotid and barrel receptor respond to the, the pressure range this to 60 mm to the 180 mm of mercury barrel response receptors respond to change in the arterial pressure barrel receptor reflex is most sensitive at the pressure of 100 mm of mercury at pressure say increases the number of impulses number of impulses from carotid sinus increases which results that is inhibition of that is the vasoconstrictor area and activation of vagal sinus. Now how do they function? Here say what is the effect of barrel receptors? Just give a look to this figure. Now barrel receptors say that is the enter in the say that is the medulla the tractus solitarius. 
then increase in the pressure send the secondary signal to the say that is we have seen the vasoconstrictor center of the medulla and I mean what is the vasoconstrictor area means what that is it say diminish, diminishes that is sympathetic say uh, rate of C stimulation and it inhibits activity of sympathetic nerve fibers and excite the vagus parasympathetic center and here what is the effect of the vagus say that is the nerve that we know it is the inhibitory in action it causes vasodilation of the veins and arterioles it causes say decrease say in the heart rate and strength of the heart contraction decreases therefore in short say excitation of barotism by high pressure in the arteries reflexly cause arterial pressure to decrease as as it decreases say decrease in the peripheral resistance and the cardiac output remember here that i have not dealt here one point that is regarding innervation of this blood vessel now these blood vessels are innervated by sympathetic as well as parasympathetic nerve fibers now you will find that so mostly say the arterioles contain here alpha 1 will say that is the receptors and beta 1 receptors now alpha 1 receptors they are stimulated by norepinephrine to cause vasoconstriction and beta 2 receptors they are say stimulated by that is the epinephrine and here that is we mean what do you mean by the vasodilation I mean where there occurs a decrease in that is the sympathetic tone and that's why the all the time blood vessel vessels uh, vessels die now what you see in this figure is that this is the effect of increased blood pressure and how do say that is the baroreceptor function to bring down that is the blood pressure to the normalized similarly the opposite effect takes place whenever there is a decrease in the blood pressure baroreceptors will be stimulated once again and what we will be their action they will now say inhibit that is the say vagal center and they will stimulate vasoconstrictor center I mean they will cause increase in the sympathetic say discharge and that will affect that is the heart functioning as we know that it will cause all say that positive effect I mean that will cause increase in the heart rate it will cause increase the excitability it will cause increase in the say force of con contraction increase in the impulse conduction and so on and cardiac output also that say increases and however it helps here to maintain that is blood pressure to bring to it's a normal level then second say that is type which is included in the say the rapidly acting mechanism or short acting mechanism is the peripheral chemoreceptors now why they are called the peripheral peripheral chemoreceptors because they are also mainly peripheral chemoreceptors their role is say um, mainly studied in the regulation of that is the blood pressure however they also help here to regulate say that is the blood pressure now where this uh, this say that is the peripheral chemoreceptors are present now there are two categories of chemoreceptors we know the central chemoreceptors which are situated in the medulla and the peripheral receptor which are situated outside the brain and they are called as a peripheral chemoreceptor where they are present they are present say once again at that is the say or arc of aorta and that is the present at that is the bifurcation of uh, that is the carotid say common carotid artery and they, hence they are mentioned as that is the aortic say uh, the chemoreceptors or carotid chemoreceptor or also called as that is the say aortic body and that is the carotid body you can see this in this figure now here say uh, we, where you can find say they are present in the form of a nodular structure these are the carotid bodies and the aortic body but mainly they are not sensitive to the pressure change but they are mainly say that is sensitive to the chemical composition of the blood I mean mainly they sense the change in the say that is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide partial pressure of say that is the change in the oxygen and that of the pH however they are more sensitive to the say change in the partial pressure of oxygen now here say means slight variation of these three factors say cause stimulation of say this all chemoreceptor and they help here to regulate the blood pressure now they are also say stimulate they are kind of innervated they are connected to the respiratory center via ninth say cranial nerve of course those receptors which are originating at the bifurcation of say common carotid artery say that we call it as a 
say carotid body and the second which originate at the aorta what we call the aortic body they are innervated by 10 cranials when there is increase in the partial pressure of oxygen that is the carbon dioxide decrease in the partial pressure of uh, that is oxygen or decrease in the pH they are stimulated and lead to the stimulation of that is the respiration now you can see here how they are say distributed as it is shown here where they are present they are present at that is the the, the one figure at the left hand and my left hand side shows they are present at the common carotid artery and here say at the carotid sinus and they are called as that is the carotid chemoreceptor and those which are present over say that is the, that is the aortic body the nodular form just say concentrated here that is what I told you this is common carotid artery and here you will find that at they are present in the nodular structure and they are called as that is the carotid body now this shows here say carotid sinus and say coming to that the carotid bodies are located on the external carotid artery near the bifurcation with the internal carotid. Now, as I have shown in the external carotid artery, you can see here in this figure, and that is each carotid body is few millimeters in size and has the distinction of having the highest blood flow per tissue weight of any organ in the body. Means it is very interesting to note that. They are all the time say perfused with the higher blood flow that is at the rate of say blood flow is say 2 liters per minute per 100 gram of the tissue. Similarly, the aortic bodies are located in the region of the aortic arch and the roots of the major arteries in the thorax. They are innervated by efferent and afferent fiber cursing the, in the aortic nose branches of the vagus and these organs are also supplied by sympathetic front fiber. Now just go back to the out figure where they are situated you can see at the aortic say that is the, at the root of say that is the aorta that is what we call is the aortic body. Then say the other say that is the type of the say that chemoreceptor which I told you that is the central chemoreceptor. These are the cells or neurons which lie just beneath the ventral surface of the medulla oblongata and therefore called medullary receptors. Neurons of central chemoreceptor project directly over the respiratory center which are slightly deeper to the central chemoreceptors. And say if you have say mean in short say these are what we call the pulmonary and the myocardial say that is the chemoreceptors. Mainly their role is that we have seen is that they play very important role in the regulation of that is the respiration. Now coming to say that is the carotid body is a chemoreceptor located in the adventitia of the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. What are the say now the what are the say that is the functions? Uh, what are the for hip to this day? Oh, sorry, there are but that is the hip is a magic Let us see one and two spaces. What is the hip? Yes, this Okay, now cable receptor functions. Sorry for delay. The carotid body senses acidemia, hypercapnia or hypoxia. Autonomic firing leads to increased blood pressure, increase the heart rate and respiratory rate. The function of the carotid body is complemented by other chemoreceptors, most notably by the aortic body located in the aortic arc. Now just we have seen say that is the where they are located. Just to summarize this, they are located in the bifurcation of the common carotid artery. Average size of the carotid body is in the range of 3 to 5 mm in diameter. Average weight is hardly say 12 milligrams. Now the blood supply from the external carotid artery to the Myers ligament that provides attachment to the carotids. Innervation that is the say also called as say the carotid sinus now or herrings now, a branch of glossopharyngeal now, originating 1.5 cm distal to jugular foramen. 
Now these receptors are having so two types of the cells. We know that is type one and the type two cells. Type one cells are chief cells that derive from neural cells release say acetylcholine, ATP, dopamine in the response to activation. Such tentacular cells these are the type two supporting cells. Now regarding the chemoreceptors, you will find that now just say how they are stimulated. The first say peripheral chemoreceptors. Now these are the receptors in the carotid sinus and the aortic arc. They sense mainly the change in the decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen, increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide and decrease in the pH. Remember they are more stimulated at the decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen. But remember here that they will be only stimulated when the partial pressure of oxygen is say below 16 mm of mercury. Coming to the carotid body, also called as chemoreceptor and carotid sinus, transmit to the brain stem via carotid sinus nerve. Carotid sinus nerve joins with the glossopharyngeal nerve. Then the say cranial nerve 9 synapses the nucleus tractus solitarius of that is the middle. The aortic body is also called as the chemoreceptor in the aortic arm. Now we know that how they are innervated, but remember that say that is the nuclear and the they synapses in the nucleus tractus solitarius of the medulla. The central chemoreceptor that we know what is their function that you have studied in the regulation of that is the brain. Now these are the receptors in the medulla. They change either decrease or they increase in the partial pressure of oxygen, decrease or increase in the pH, say not say decrease in a, or increase in the partial pressure of oxygen in brain fluid. Central chemoreceptors are not stimulated by hypoxia like other cells. They are depressed by hypoxia. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide, then pH influenced by that is the arterial, say that is the carbon dioxide and so on. Now peripheral chemoreceptors, mainly they are sensitive to say that is the changes occurring in chemical composition of blood and they show response to chemical composition and partial pressure, change in the partial pressure of oxygen, partial pressure of carbon dioxide and pH. They are structurally and functionally different from baroreceptors. The major function of the chemoreceptor is to regulate respiration. They also help to regulate blood pressure whenever there is a decrease in the partial pressure of oxygen or increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide or a decrease in pH means that is the increase in the hydrogen ion concentration. In this situation, chemoreceptors will be stimulated. What happens is that on stimulation of these receptors, afferent fibers from the carotid body transmit impulses of 9th cell nerve to the medulla through 9th nerve and the afferent fibers from the aortic body transport impulses through the 10th nerve that is the vagus nerve. These impulses reach medulla and from which Stimulatory impulses are sent to the cardiostimulatory center and inhibitory impulses are sent to the vagal center. Hence, there is increase in the heart rate, force of contraction and increase in the cardiac output and generalized vasoconstriction and all factors help to increase blood pressure. Chemoreceptors are stimulated when blood pressure falls below 60 mm of mercury because at this pressure there is relative hypoxia of chemoreceptor. They will prevent further fall in blood pressure. Now, other, now this completes here, that is two important mechanisms. First, baroreceptors and the chemoreceptors. Now, other mechanism which is included is that, that is the ischemic, say, response of the brain. Now, remember here that when blood flow to CNS is, say, decreased, there is accumulation of carbon dioxide to the greater extent. There is increase in the carbon dioxide within neuronal tissue. This increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide to stimulate vasomotor center very actively to cause large increase in the blood pressure. And increase in the blood pressure helps to restore some degree of blood supply to the brain and this will cause removal of carbon dioxide and help to supply oxygen. This ischemic response helps to relieve ischemia. Stimulation is caused by strong action of vasomotor center, which causes severe vasoconstriction of the peripheral blood vessel. 
this also helps to increase the peripheral resistance thereby increasing here say that is the blood pressure actually in the say cns ischemic response the cns ischemic response starts working remember that when the blood pressure falls below 60 mm of mercury and increased response is seen when the blood pressure is in, is in between 50 to 20 mm of mercury this pressure is very low pressure and cns ischemic response is more or less as last attempt made by body to bring blood pressure to back to the norm as we know that that is the brain functioning requires all the time that is continuous say blood supply and uh, even say ischemia just cause loss of consciousness and the other say that is abnormality that also we know ischemia of the brain occurs when there is a increase in the intracranial tension that is which cause similar response to increased blood pressure this is called as cushing reaction remember that there is a different now the cns ischemic response starts working when blood pressure falls below 60 mm of mercury and increased response is when blood pressure is between 15 to 20 mm of mercury it is related with the decrease in the blood pressure but however there also occur the other type of ischemia of the brain when there is a increase in the intracranial tension which cause a similar response to, in, to cause increase in the blood pressure this is called as that is the cushing reaction that also will say now other type of say that is the receptors what we call it as which are included in this the first category rapidly are the sharp say regulatory mechanism is the low pressure receptors in these receptors they are mainly found in the right atrium and the pulmonary artery these receptors are basically barrel receptors and function in the same way like systemic barrel receptors whenever there is increase in the pulmonary pressure these receptors will be stimulated since they are situated in the atria and the pulmonary artery and then they are called as low pressure receptors similarly the other important say that is the effect that or reflex which is included is that bell bridge reflex the bell bridge say discovered in 1950 that the rapid infusion of a large volume of saline into venous system causes a transient tachycardia may be due to the stay that is that is the the stretch say activated channel that we know that and here say the bell bridge reflex helps to prevent accumulation of blood in the right atrium or pulmonary cell this we have studied say that is regulation of say that is the uh, the frog's heart that is the so we have escape phenomenon where we have come across this bell bridge reflex it helps to prevent accumulation of blood in the right atrium or in the pulmonary circulation remember here that increased filling of the atrium or atriocranial region by large intravenous infusion of the blood or saline cause increase in the atrial pressure causing increase in the heart rate or tachycardia up to 75% this say effect is observed only in intact say animal and in the number of species when we have seen what is this bell bridge reflex that is say the accumulation of the blood at venous side will cause increase in the blood pressure by increase in the say that is the heart rate similarly the heart rate response to the atrial filling in the human seem to uh, seems to depend on the existing heart the heart rate at the time of application of the stay that is the lower the existing heart rate the greater the increase and the say increase in the venous volume now different investigators reported different observations suggesting that this reflex probably plays a secondary role in the cardiovascular regulation stretch receptors of the atria which elicit bembridge reflex transmit their afferent signal to the vagus nerve to the medulla then efferent signals are transmitted back to the both vagal and the sympathetic nerves to increase heart rate to presumably the strength of the con contraction say the day and this here helps to retain that is the normal heart rate and that is the say contraction of the say that is the heart this to maintain the blood pressure thus this reflex helps to prevent damming of blood in the veins and atria and that is the pulmonary say that is circulation then 
one important say that is the category is that there are present the volume say that is the receptor which is the third category which is included in say that is rapidly or short acting mechanism that we call it the volume receptor these receptors are present in atria and are stimulated when there is increase in the blood pressure when the receptors are stimulated they cause two different responses remember here means mainly these receptors are present in the atria and are stimulated when there is increase in the blood pressure they cause two effect number one they cause increase in the urine formation by causing constriction of the afferent afferent arteries in the kidneys and increase the filtration these volume receptors say inhibit the secretion of a hormone that is the adh that we know say and adh prevents say that it diuresis therefore when say that is the adh is inhibited there may be say increased formation of urine and that way here they help here to maintain say normal volume of the fluid in the body the net say result is that there is a increased water loss from the body and extracellular fluid blood volume and blood pressure come back to the normal this is the function of volume receptor then comes here say that is the say second mechanism that as i have told you told you that is say regarding that is the intermittent acting mechanism now there are some of the mechanism that we have to consider that is the in the under intermediate acting mechanism there is the first mechanism is the capillary fluid shift mechanism in this mechanism whenever there is an increase in the blood pressure there will be capillary say increase in the capillary pressure increase capillary pressure will cause increased filtration of the fluid from capillaries into the surrounding tissue this will cause a decrease in the blood volume and therefore decrease in the blood pressure means in short said whenever there is increase in the blood pressure there will be increase in the capillary pressure when blood pressure decreases there will be osmosis of the fluid from the tissues in the capillaries this will help you to increase the blood volume and therefore blood pressure uh, will be say will increase this is called as that is the what we call a capillary fluid shift mechanism in short you can study that in the detail also just for say just to give the idea i have mentioned here now there is other mechanism what we call it as say stress relaxation of blood vessel which is included in intermediate acting mechanism in this mechanism when blood pressure is increased blood pressure will distend the blood vessels and these large blood vessels say it will occur in larger blood vessels of course these larger blood vessels will help to cause an increase in the blood flow and decrease in the peripheral resistor this will help to bring back to say that is the blood the pressure to not means here say that is here say there I mean this in this mechanism due to the increase in the blood pressure it will distend the blood flow vessel and these large vessels will help to cause say an increase in the blood flow and that will decrease here say peripheral resistance and hence that will help here to bring back blood pressure back to the norm then second important mechanism which is the renin angiotensin mechanism or what we call as a renin angiotensin system in this renin angiotensin system that we know that renin is a hormone secreted by a structure known as dextroglobular apparatus in the kidneys renin is formed from the precursor called as proreni it pre precursor is proreni most of the part of secreted renin enter the circulation and some of it remains in the kidneys and extend a local direct effect on the kidneys now remember that when renin enters circulation it acts on plasma protein angiotensinogen it is a alpha 2 type of globulin and converts it to the angiotensin 1 mean it is a decapeptide with 10 amino acid now angiotensin 1 reaches to the lungs where angiotensin converting enzyme acts on that is the angiotensin 1 to convert it into angiotensin 2 it is what we call it the octopeptide i mean remember here when renin enters the circulation it acts on the angiotensin 1 it converts it into the angiotensin 1 
Now, angiotensin 1, the richest to the lung, where the converting enzyme, that we call it the angiotensin converting enzyme, ACE, con acts on the angiotensin 1 and converts it into the angiotensin 2, it is the octapeptide. Then, angiotensin 2, what is the action of the angiotensin 2? Which has the following important action as it causes vasoconstriction. Number one, it increases secretion of hormone aldosterone from the kidneys. That all of you know. What is the action of the aldosterone? It acts upon the kidneys and causes increase of the absorption of sodium ions. Locally, say angiotensin 2 in the kidneys cause powerful vasoconstriction of say afferent arterioles of the glomerulus causing reduced filtration. Fourth important function is that angiotensin 2 acts as a strong thirst stimulator. It causes consumption of large volume of the water causing rise in the blood pressure. This mechanism also plays some role in long term control of that is the blood pressure. Then say now there is one enzyme angiotensinase which now converts here say angiotensin 2 into angiotensin 3. Now angiotensin 3 has 40% of the pressure activity of angiotensin 2 pressure means vasoconstrictor activity but 100% of the aldosterone producing activity means it causes the retention of the sodium ion that we know and it helps here to say conserve water increases mean arterial pressure mean it helps here to increase the mean arterial pressure finally it is converted into the angiotensin 4 angiotensin 4 is a hexapeptide that like angiotensin 3 has some lesser activity means here say it is a hexapeptide and it is say identical to the some extent to the action of that is the angiotensin 3 when just I mentioned here that is about the it is having that is the say lesser pressure activity uh, as compared to the angiotensin 3. Now this renin angiotensin mechanism takes about 20 minutes for its activation. But once it starts functioning it brings back blood pressure to the original level. The stimulus for secretion of renin is decrease in the sodium ion concentration of the blood reaching the cells of the extraglomerular apparatus and which inhibits the mechanism of angiotensin so formation that we have seen. This will occur when there is a fall in the blood pressure or decrease in the extracellular fluid, volume or any other condition decrease in sodium ion concentration. I mean in short say the, ball, the fall in the blood pressure will decrease sodium load because there will be decrease in the quantity of the blood reaching the dextraclomular apparatus. Direct action of the renin on the kidneys is caused by the small quantity of the renin which remains within the renin tissue. The direct action is that there is a, ves a vasoconstriction of the renal say blood flow in the kidney mean, which causes the say the decrease in the venous blood flow in the kidneys which allows a larger amount of sodium ions to be reabsorbed from the kidney. Out of these two mechanisms, the direct effect is more powerful as say that is say compared to the effect produced by increasing aldosterone secretion. Renin angiotensin system is an automatic feedback mechanism which helps here to maintain arterial blood pressure to say normal level. In short say you can see in this figure that is diagram say how this renin angiotensin system is activated decrease in the blood pressure causes secretion of the renin that we know which acts on the angiotensinogen and converts it to say angiotensin 1 then further say it reaches to the enzyme and causes say say angiotensin 2 by the action of say angiotensin converting enzyme now if you remember that say that is angio angiotensin uh, mean that is converting enzyme inhibitors are used to regulate the blood pressure that we know and here say what is the action of angiotensin 2 it causes the vasoconstriction and similarly the second effect is that it say causes the stimulation of the aldosterone from the adrenal cortex to cause aldosterone the release aldosterone now what is the action of aldosterone 
increase water and sodium retention and lastly it causes the increased blood pressure this is the same effect which is causes, caused by angiotensin 2 by vasoconstriction and lastly say angiotensin 2 it say converted into the angiotensin is uh, converts the angiotensin 2 into angiotensin 3 and how it is further degraded angiotensin 3 in short say what we have studied here say that is the renin angiotensin machine i hope that that you have watched my lecture